So the percentage of uh, mild and asymptomatic cases is about 80 uh, percent. Two of the major databases from China and Italy has both shown that uh, that's the about the percentage that we see of uh, mild and asymptomatic cases. When is it considered asymptomatic is that it only can be found out through contact tracing and these are patients who grow the virus on their RT-PCR but do not show any signs of fever, cough, breathlessness, etc. at all for more than a 3-4 week period. Uh, so those are the ones who are asymptomatic. Of course, there will be fairly large percentage of patients who will be asymptomatic and can never be detected. The pre-symptomatic ones are that down the line in a few days they start getting symptoms. So they were in the pre-symptomatic stages uh, but the virus was detected. The asymptomatic ones are who never get the symptoms. Well, it's difficult to say how many uh, asymptomatic patients will turn pre-symptomatic but an interesting study two studies actually have happened one from China and another from the Diamond uh, Princess the cruise ship which was an interesting study because the, Di the Diamond Princess uh, cruise ship was a kind of a contained lab for this and they found that about 75% of the patients who were detected to be oh, sorry 50% of the patients who were tested turned out to be positive without having symptoms but out of those though they were asymptomatic at the time of test but over a period of time almost 75 percent of those turned out to have symptoms later so only 25 percent remained asymptomatic 75 percent became symptomatic after a little while Actually, that's a sign that the body's immune response is working. One is that the viral load was not very large and that's why they did not mount a strong immune challenge. Or the other is that they, uh, they have very good immune systems which block the virus and did not cause any symptoms while blocking the virus from causing the disease. So actually, mildly symptomatic and asymptomatic cases are a good sign. That means that we have started fighting back and our immune system has started fighting back the virus. And it is it was been predicted by all models, all epidemiological models have said this before also, that a large percentage of the young will remain asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic like most uh, viral respiratory viral illnesses only a small percentage gets uh, more severe or uh, more typical symptoms and that's a sign when these young people build up their immunity this is what is going to build up the herd immunity that we are talking about and 60 to 70 percent of the patients uh, of the people have the infection and build an immunity to it then the transmission reduces long term of this viral infection Like symptomatic cases, they start their viral shedding anywhere after 24 hours, but predominantly between three and seven days, but can go up, on to, up to 14 days. And uh, uh, well, the chances of spreading by asymptomatic patients is relatively less. The reason being the virus is spread through the symptoms, isn't it? That when you cough or you sneeze, the fomites and the secretions that go out, those are the ones which infect people. So if the person is asymptomatic, the chances are less. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. The chances are less of severe spread of infection from there. We cannot 100% stop transmission because of asymptomatic uh, cases from asymptomatic cases. But that is the reason why that you need to wash your hands, keep social distancing as far as possible, wear a mask in public, and also clean surfaces as far as possible, which are commonly touched and used. So this will take care of all forms of infection, symptomatic and asymptomatic. That is the target. Can you stop it 100%? No, and you should not stop it 100%. Actually, the whole idea of at this present moment across the world that some degree of lockdown, reduced movement of people outside, etc. is only to slow the surge, the peak number of cases coming into the healthcare system, that the healthcare system does not get overwhelmed. But 
finally the infection has to go into the community cause a build up of immunity build up the herd immunity and then long term that is the major way in which this covid infection is going to be stopped or reduced not completely it cannot never be completely stopped be reduced its severity reduced the number of people it infects reduced and that is the important part this these measures that are being taken now it's just to reduce the surge not completely stop the infection forever get that out, get we have to get that out of our heads when it spreads in the community it builds up an immunity and a herd immunity and that's the best way and not just that what is interesting is and that's happened to many viruses and bacteria like the influenza virus or the cholera virus the bacteria etc is that once a large percentage of people are infected the whole idea of a virus for itself is not to kill people a virus spreads or lives to to increase its spread and increase its life okay if it kills the person it is it has infected then the chances of it spread actually reduces so to spread further the virus does not need to kill it is not going out there to kill you it is wanting to spread itself and grow itself like population growth right that's what it wants to do so to do that many a times many virus and bacteria actually become less virulent over a period of time so that they spread more without causing a severe disease and killing less and this has been seen it has happened to many viruses and bacteria and the possibility that it will happen to covid in the long run is very high but at the present moment it is a worrying and a dangerous virus because it is its ability to kill is more than the usual influenza virus that is why we have to st stop the surge but long term we have to build herd immunity which the swedish model the swedes are trying to do they are actually allowing the spread of the virus among the young and protecting the elderly keeping them isolated the elderly isolated providing them with daily needs and the food etc so that they are isolated they don't get infected maybe not possible in the indian larger indian context of a much larger population etc but that's an interesting model to watch actually